Welcome to the Forging Honor Podcast. I'm Jonathan George. And I'm Benjamin Jones. Here at The Forge, we explore what it means to live as Christian men. Along the way, we'll be doing habit-forming challenges to build character through action. We are by no means experts, just two young Christian men trying to make sense of a wild world. That's right. We do our best to learn and hope you'll join us on the journey. And if you want to get directly involved, go to forginghonor.com to find information on how to join our community. This is episode 33. We need to talk. Fun, creative titles for our conversation episodes. Yes. I'm never the one who gets to say that. I never get to say we need to talk. I'm always being told we need to talk. So it's, it feels good to say it, even just, you know, as an episode title. We, we need to talk, Banjo. <laughs> All right. That could be our whole conversation, JJ, just playing out various forms of conversations like the breakup, the get together, the meet cute, you know. It has nothing to do with Forging Honor <laughs> whatsoever, but we had fun doing but it. We enjoyed it. All right. Well, it's challenge wrap up time. We are on the final episode of our three episode series on conversation and community. Uh, so, as a reminder, our challenges now last for a total of six weeks. Um, they are simple daily tasks to grow us as men. This challenge that we are wrapping up today uh, is a uh, is a challenge to do have a twenty minute conversation every day, preferably um, in person, um, possibly over a coffee or a beer or um, a cigar or something with another man, um, and just just for the purpose of growing your local community. So Banjo, how did you do? I did well. I think I think I have a if I I didn't totally clock all of my conversations this week, but I I think I have at least a 20 minute conversation with somebody every day. Um some some very different conversations have like popped up for me over the last 2 weeks since our last episode and um I think I've been surprised by yeah, just a wide variety and intensity that conversations can have. And we can talk a little bit about that later, but I've I've also become convinced over the last two to, you know, two to four weeks, just of how necessary conversations are um, to community and how little we're doing it um, and how much more we need it. Um, So I've, I've, I've been excited by this challenge. How'd how'd you do? How'd you go with this Uh, one? You know, on the days where I was thinking about it and intentional about it, it was very good. Um, on the days, what, I, one of the one of the faults of working remotely is you don't get to be in community a, as often. Like I have yeah. to put myself out there. So if I've been um, at work all day online and then I don't go out or I don't invite someone into my home or I don't take the time to intentionally sit down with my wife and have that conversation, right? Th- there goes that opportunity. Right. Um, on the days where I go out, there's opportunities abound, and it's wonderful. So I would say I probably hit uh, somewhere between an eighty and ninety percent uh, total. Um, we need to come up with a better rating system. We had a great rating system when we were doing just the two week yeah. challenges. We need to come up with a good rating system. Um, but for now, somewhere in the eighty to ninety percent range uh, for myself. And that said, I think uh, one of the things that I appreciated about the challenge was it was on my mind when I was out with friends or when I was going to see someone, hey, this is my opportunity to have a quality conversation for the day, right? Yeah. Um, It was more than just, oh, I get to see this person or I need to talk to them about whatever it is. It's, I can make, I can turn this into that quality conversation that I need to have today. Yeah. What was the mark for you? What, what, what's the sign that you're like, okay, I'm, this is a good conversation or, you know, you, you walk away from a conversation, you go, okay, that one, that one was good. That was solid. I, I don't know if I can quite put it, in, put it into words. Um, but, you know, there's something that happens when you are enjoying a conversation where both of you kind of are, are batting back and forth in a wonderful way. Yeah, you're in the flow. Yes. Um, not, not, in a, not in a combative way necessarily, though, though you might have some of that with some of your friends. Um, more in a – it's – the, the conversation just naturally starts to take a life of its own, right? And I'm sure everyone's experienced that at one point or another. Some people are really good at it. Um, 
and for me, again, like I, again, I don't know if I could quite quantify it, and yet, um, there were definitely some conversations that were better than others in in that sense. Do you have Do you have something that you go that's a good conversation, or is it kind of ambiguous like mine? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things you know it when you see it, I guess. And there there are a few things you know if I I get to learn something new about a person or about what they care about, that's usually a good sign. Um, you know, I, I like a conversation where the other person's eyes light up, you yes, know, with, makes where they, they get to say, you know, I love asking a question that, um, that no one's been asked before. Um, and I like, I like having to, um, I like giving somebody something that, that that's like, that breaks the, the normative behavior for a conversation, you know? So, you know, I think I asked, uh, maybe, but I can't remember if I asked Ross this, but I think I asked Connor this, but you know, like, what's a question that you wish you were asked? You know, that's one of my right. favorites to throw at people. Um, cause they don't usually think of it, but I find that most people, especially adults have something that they're, they're always a little bit, you know, they're wanting, they're wanting to get out, you know? Um, and so i like the conversations where I let that get out of somebody. I, I, I can hopefully bring that out of somebody. Most Absolutely. of the conversations I love, I, I find, and this will be ironic for for the podcast, but the the some of the best conversations are the ones where I'm listening more than I'm talking. You know, I I tend to like those conversations more. Um, I can't think of another thing where that's true. You know, it's not like like in sports. I don't have more fun on the bench. You know, I right. have more fun in the in the field. Do you find that to be the case, or do you, you know? That, Again, I, I think it kind of depends on the conversation. Yeah. Um, because someone, some people are just very good at asking questions. And I like anybody else. I like to be asked questions about myself. I like to right. talk about myself. Um, and so, you know, turning that on its head and asking other people about themselves and learning about them. I think, I think when at least one person in the conversation is doing that, it can be a good conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, I've definitely encountered people though where I never get the chance to even ask them a question. They refuse oh, yeah. to let me ask them a question. Or yeah. I, I'll ask them I'll ask them a question and they'll answer it as shortly as possible and then immediately follow it by a totally different question. Like they they refuse to allow that back and forth to happen. Right. It's almost like they're afraid of being asked about themselves or they read somewhere that they should listen and ask questions and then they forgot that sometimes <laughs> people want to have a little bit of a back and forth. Yeah. I had a student one time um, bring in a book that he was, he was reading. Um, and, and I was like, what's, what's this, what's this book you've got? And he was like, oh, this is a, this is a book about, um, how to manipulate people, <laughs> how to get them to do what you want. And I was like, really, what, what are some of the things that you're supposed to do? And he's like, oh, you're supposed to ask people questions and listen. Um, yep, totally. And, and I thought like, it's totally, it's totally backwards. Like it's totally, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's always a way to ruin great things. Um, but to your, you know, to your point about like people don't want to be known. I was just watching Citizen Kane last night, um, which is a pretentious, you know, movie thing to say, but hey, I'm a pretentious movie guy. I wouldn't so. know that. I've never seen it. You've never seen it? <gasps> no. See, joy, you're on joy. your pretentious movie yes, but, thing going. <laughs> but this is my joy here because one yes, day yes. you will get to watch Citizen Kane and enjoy it. And that's, okay. that's good. Fair enough. Um, but the thing with Citizen Kane is it's a it's a movie about a man who's who's never been known. You know, um, it's it's a like it, it, you know he's um, Citizen Kane is basically you know this uh, famous famous newspaper man William Randolph Hearst. Uh, it's kind of a loose satire on him. Um, but the thing that Orson Welles does in that movie to Citizen Kane is we're, we're hearing about Citizen Kane from all of these other people in his life, but we never hear about Citizen Kane from Citizen Kane. Um, and we look at all these important conversations from his life. And I was studying it last night and I was thinking, we never see Citizen Kane reveal himself. We never see him be vulnerable in a conversation. He might ask lots of questions. He might um, listen attentively, but at no point does he kind of like share a piece of himself with his listener. And I think that's something that's really important for us to do in conversation, but I don't know how to like teach someone to do that in a way that's genuine and real, except by modeling it. Can you think of anything that's like 
this is how you, or even how to demonstrate that. Like, can you, as we're talking, can, can we do anything other than be really stagey in our conversation right now because we're on a podcast? Um, I, I don't, I don't know about the podcast question. I, I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> um, I do. I was thinking though, um, if you're asking, when you're asking about that, like how, how do we do that? How do we share of ourselves a little bit and get some of that back and forth? Um, and I was thinking something that politicians do really badly is try to relate to people. Oh yeah. Right. They always try to drop that. Look, I'm relatable because I struggle with this thing to, uh, you know, I, I can, roll I my can't buy up. my groceries either. Like whatever it is. <laughs> um, yeah. Or I can roll my sleeves up or look at me. I, I wear whatever, you know, um, but that's something if, if that's something politicians do really well i think some people do that really well or they they do that poorly some people do that really well sure um and i think that's a byproduct of you actually have something in common with the other person if you do that well um like if you, that's a you natural mean actually be relatable not exactly pretend to be relatable. don't be don't pretend to be relatable i mean don't be the politician be the person that's actually relatable um and don't try to relate in areas where you can't relate yeah. Right. Um, if, if you, you know, I, I've met some interesting people. Like I, I, I know this race car driver. I know nothing about driving race cars. I can't really relate to that. Like right. my driving yeah, like, on, the I do 90 on the highway. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like, sorry, I, I've, I've never driven, I've never been in the seat of a, an insanely fast car going around in circles. Like I, I don't know much about that. It's cool. I'd love to know more. I can ask about that. But I can't relate on that. You know, I can relate yeah. on other topics relating to fatherhood. Right. Right. So don't, so don't, I, like, I shouldn't try to relate in the areas where I, I'm not going to have an impact, but I can learn about that. So show interest in those things. Um, and yeah, doing I, it. Go ahead, Benjo. Well, I was just going to say, do like the way that you're talking about relating to a person is seeing them as multifaceted and having, they have different parts of themselves. Right. And we, we tend to, just kind of be like, oh, that person is that thing. Like that they, they do that thing. And so, you know, it's like our, you know, yes, I love absolutely. my grand I love my grandparents, but you know, it's that they every grandparent has that thing where you like tell them that one thing that you like when you're six, and then every birthday present you receive for the next 30 years is that one thing. Um I got lucky and you know, I love Spider Man from the age of six all the way up to now, and so there's no issue. But, you know, some people aren't that lucky. I, I have the same thing with my grandmother and uh yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's good. It's good. But, though. but we do that conversationally too. Like we can pigeonhole somebody and to be like, Oh, you're right. the music guy, you know, or right. You're the, you're the pipe smoker. Let me, let me ask you about that. And that, and that's the only thing you talk about. Which I, that could be, that could be a good intro to a conversation because if somebody right. truly enjoys that thing, they will, they will love to talk about it. You know, and if you Ross, ask me. Ross talked about that. Yes. Yeah. He talked about having like, there's the one guy who always has that conversation with him about camping. You know, but that always leads on to something else. Right, right. Uh, which if you're just, uh, if you're listening to this episode and haven't listened to the previous two episodes, um, we, we had Ross Cooks and uh, Connor Neville, uh, both of them excellent conversationalists and two different perspectives on conversation. I think mm -hmm. they were driving at the same thing, but, but they came from two different backgrounds. And uh, those were good conversations, well worth a listen. Go check those out and then come back here. Uh, because we're going to be talking about those conversations. Um, we asked Ross and Connor a variety of questions, several of the same kinds of questions. Um, and we've kind of already been jumping around the question, what makes a good conversation? Um, I think one thing that was interesting that we brought up with Ross was um, why, why do men especially sometimes hesitate to have these conversations? Right. We talked about um, is it, is there a loneliness epidemic in America or worldwide? And he said, he thinks it's a modern, a, a problem of fraternity essentially. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of that banjo? What did you have? Was there anything surprising in his answer to you? You've known Ross longer than I have. So, yeah, no, I thought that was, um, I thought that was pretty insightful. Um, you know, it, it, it also tempered my, it tempers my, um, I don't know what the opposite of patriotism is but like i would consider myself a patriotic person but i also have like a patriotic bitterness it, it's uh, called being a family member where you can talk port badly about your family but no one but else is allowed that, to. that's exactly what it is that's what it is 
Um, that's a very good analogy. Like if a you, British person person came and said, "Hey, here's how terrible America is," you'd be like, "No, I'd be like, go drink your tea. Go, get off of get here. your tea out of here." Oh, yeah, he's insulting me. I'm drinking tea this morning because my uh, is bothering me. Drink coffee like an American. Dang it. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I thought it was a, I thought it was a good insight, and I I think. I can't remember if we talked about this and when he, what he was talking about, but you know, it's, it's an off sighted truism that we live, we live lives now on the internet. We live lives that are nice and neat and pretty and, um, well-designed. Um, you know, every, every method of communication we have right now is just like is online and is on a screen, um, and is short and is brief and is, it's uh, manipulatable. You know, everything we have can be edited now, even our text messages. Um, and nothing drives me more insane than seeing these commercials for like Google Photo. Sorry, Google. And they're like, you can use AI to adjust your photos now to like delete elements or like to change your smile. Like just stuff like that is like. It's kind of cool, but also kind of scary. It's very scary because, I mean, you can. It's just like, well, I can get rid of all the parts of my life that I think are ugly or uncomfortable or are broken. And then we don't, my problem with it is that we don't deal with those things then, you know, we don't, we don't address those things. We, we literally airbrush it under the rug. And I've had, so this week I've had a a couple of conversations with people where I started doing something in my classes with, where I was just asking, you know, asking the kids to you know, if they need any, if they ever needed to talk, basically, you know, they can come and talk. And I had a couple of kids who came and just had, I had a conversation with them and through the conversation had some like really hard things come out about them, what they're going through and, and stuff like that. And I just realized that like these, a a constant refrain from those kids, the kids who were hurting was, I feel like, um, I'm always listening to other people. I feel like I'm always caring for other people. Uh, I'm always seeing other people, but nobody sees me, um, or words to that effect. And, uh, you know, I think this is, I think this is exaggerated in our adolescent population, but I think it's true for all of us is that we have this tendency, we're so anxious about the way that we come off to everyone else, the way that we, um, our, our actions are interpreted, Um, we don't want to say anything offensive. We don't want to say anything inappropriate. We don't want to say anything that's going to get us canceled in 30 years, you know, so we're so safe with everything we say. And as a result, I think we have people, you know, we're so self-centered in that, that we don't look at the people that are around us and we don't ask them what their needs are and, and, and how they need help and, and how are you really doing, you know, and most of that is just listening. Um, and, and that's another thing that we're not doing well, but um, I, th- I think we're, you know, to Ross's point, I think we're living in a modern age that says, Hey, we're, we're so close to living a perfect life that we can just kind of scrub over the parts that aren't quite perfect. And I think as a result of that, nobody's, nobody's seeing the people that are hurting, really seeing the people that are hurting, um, as more than a cause or as more than a, you know, a button or a bracelet. Um, and I think we need to actually like look at the people in our inner circle and say like, how are you doing and how can I help you with that? I don't know. That's, that- that's really good. I actually, you make me think of a um, longtime pastor that I sat under who he had a habit, you know, you'd have your standard morning. How are you? Oh, how are you? And then he'd look at you and say, how are you really doing? Yeah. And that, that always stood out to me because he's, he's doing that exact thing you're talking about, kind of digging in a little deeper asking about the person and he's doing it from a pastoral perspective. You know, I think, I think you and I do that from, can do that from the perspective of, Hey, you're my buddy. You're, you're my guy friend, whoever that I've known for a long time. You know, I've walked with you for a long time. I kind of know your struggles. I can ask about that. I can see how, how you're doing in these things. Yeah. And, you know, you use the word pastoral there and, and I've had a couple of conversations with people where I've, where I've been kind of expressed this care, expressed this desire for like people to be, you know, we should be listening to people in this way. We should be asking these kinds of questions. Um, and I've had a couple of the people say, well, you know, Pedro, that's because you have a pastoral heart or you have like a sort of like pastoral background. Cause my dad's a pastor and that kind of thing. And, and I've been thinking about it. It's like, no, I think we should all have that heart. Like, I think that's a, I think we should all have that pastoral care for others. 
Like we have pastors in our lives and those are, that's good, but we should be encouraging one another to like, um, to love one another. Well, you know, right. Um, first, Absolutely. First John, um, been reading that with some of my kids at school and, and you know, first John's encouragement is like, if we, if we love God, we have to love our neighbor. We have to look out for one another, um, and listen to them well. So anyway, I think conversations are, are something that we're, we're missing in that area. Was there stuff from the Ross conversation that you f- were surprised by or, or from the Connor conversation that you were surprised by that you hadn't thought of? I, I don't think anything particularly uh, surprising, but there were a few things that jumped out. I've been thinking about the, uh, the third space thing that we talked about yeah. with Connor, um, partly because I have that term for it now. So I've, I've, I hadn't thought really thought about that before. You have some awesome third spaces in your life. I really do. I, I'm really blessed. And uh, I, I've been thinking through, like, I, I guess um, I have so many awesome third spaces, as you put it, uh, that I, I've never f- felt the need to be like, man, I'm, I'm lonely. I'm, I'm, right. I'm this guy doing it on my own. Like, I've never been that the lone wolf off doing whatever. Um, but as I, as I've thought about it, and just started looking around and kind of taking assessment of what I do have in my life, uh, you know, my kind of figuring out, realizing a lot of my third spaces revolve around my church community. Mm-hmm. So um, even even if it's not directly related to church, usually it's other guys from my church or other guys that I've known in that community for a long time. Um, some of my best com- best conversations happen out of that. Some of my best community. Uh, what's interesting is I also have a couple other, you know, quote unquote, third spaces where it's not related to my church community at all. Uh, and and branching out from that has definitely been different, um, but more opportunity for ripe conversation. I had a really great conversation. I, I went to uh, this men's workout group called F3 on, um, this, what was it, Thursday? Uh, and it was just, they were just doing a run that morning. Uh, so I'm going on this run and I had a great conversation the whole run with this guy that I happened to be next to. Turns out he knows a ton of the people I know. His his kids go to school with someone's family that I know really well. So there's all these connections. Uh, and then it turned out we were at the same Christmas party this last year. And no, no way. So like, it's funny, you know, small world. But I got to have a whole conversation with this guy where in a previous context, I hadn't even really like we hadn't connected. Yeah. Um, partially because I think there's probably an age difference. You know, his kids are in middle school and high school and here I am with, with babies, right? Totally different stage of life, that kind of thing. But I, I, I got to thinking that's interesting because as I talk to some of these guys, their entire third space is like this workout group or that right. their school, where their kids schooling is. Um, and I, I haven't really known what to think about that or if there's if there's a problem with that um it actually if anything i've been thinking i should cut down on the amount that i do because i have i have so many third spaces i think it's taking away from my first and second a little bit oh yeah Um, sure and because i've been i've been so focused on community for so long so that's that those are just some personal reflections coming out of that that i i hadn't really thought about or had the I think vocabulary to think about in that way before. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, even as you're talking, uh, you know, we're always to peek behind the curtain a little bit. We're always thinking about like what, you know, what challenges cover are coming up and we'll talk more about that later. But right. it occurs to me that one challenge we could, we could do um, in the future would be something like a, um, a, a challenge about solitude, you know, which I yes. think is, is different than loneliness. Um, one of my favorite lines from the movie Heat is, "Lady, I am alone. I am not lonely." Um, but um, that's for another time. Anyway, but just like we're not very good at being alone, we're not very good at at solitude um, in in modern America. I think, um, and I because we're afraid to know ourselves, you know. And I think if we're at a, at a place where we're afraid to know ourselves, then we're afraid for other people to know us as well. And that can make a conversation in a third space just as difficult um, as it as it would in any other place because if if we're still not willing to come to the table because we don't know who we are, 
that that's going to make that more challenging. 100%. Uh, I was just thinking about this. Um, I realized the other day I drove in an entire 40 minutes home without turning on a podcast or music. It's so hard. It's so difficult to do. Well, except I realized I do that at least once a week. That's good. That's I, You know, I, I'm at least like I listen to music in the car if the CD is in the player. Yeah. Kind of thing. Like I, I maybe I'll put it in if I want to. Um, and then it just automatically plays and it completely tunes out. Or like if I'm going to listen to a podcast, I have to intentionally be like, okay, time to put the podcast in. We're going to sit and we're going to drive. But I was driving back from a camping trip and just never listened to anything. And it was strange. The um, But I, on that note, though, that same camping trip, you know, wonderful time of hiking and, and you're, you're out in nature, you're hiking all day. There was a guy that uh, he met up with us late on this trip, right? So he, he just had to, he hiked out alone for uh, just a few miles. But he got into camp and just immediately said, man, my phone is so low. I was listening to music the whole way. And I was just like, yeah. what, what? You're in nature. You've got these views. Yeah. Do you, do you have to listen to music? Um, and like, it, it just never occurred to me, like, why you need to listen to music on the hiking trail. I've never had that thought before. And I, I don't know if that's a product of how I was raised or if it's just I'm comfortable with my thoughts. But uh, it might, in it, being in conversation with this guy who needed music to be on the trail, uh, I could tell he wasn't comfortable with some of his own thoughts either. Like, I wonder if that's right. something going on there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's, for me, there's, it's always like a couple of things where it's like, I feel at, at this point in my life, this is something that needs to change. But it, um, at this point in my life, if I'm not, if I'm going someplace, especially like in a car, I'm by myself and I don't, if I don't have a podcast on, I feel lazy. Like I feel like I'm wasting time. Like, so I, I do get that feeling because it's like I could be learning something. Right. It's like, but this is my this is my time to learn. This is my time. And I'm not always learning something like it's super productive, but I can tell you a lot more about the NBA than I could six months ago, which is nice. Um it's such an achievement, Banjo. I know, Man. I know. Uh, but you should see Wembiana. I mean, his spread. It's it's exp- you know. I have no um, idea what you're what you're talking about. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, but at the same time, there's also like, uh, I, I've given, because of that, I have that anxiousness of that. I'm not, I'm not doing enough, which I think is a bad instinct to have. Um, but at the same time, there's like, I am less and less comfortable with that, that silence and that space. Um, I still need it and I still enjoy it. And one thing that I've been trying to do, actually, I think as in, in some ways as a byproduct of this conversation podcast or conversation challenge, I should say, um, I've taken more time to say like, it was something that Ross said, actually, he said, you know, if you're going to, I think it was Ross or maybe it was, maybe it was Connor. Maybe they both said it. You just need to be reading a lot. I um, think they did both say that. Yeah. I think, yeah. They did both say that, which maybe isn't all that surprising. Um, but I've been realizing like, something Ross said is if you're going to write well, you need to read well. And actually Connor did echo that now that I'm thinking about it, he did echo that. So I've been like, I'm not, I I haven't finished a book in like a month. Um, Like I've been, I've started like two or three books, but I haven't finished any books. And I was like, I got to fix that. I've got to like sit down and finish a book. Um, But I realized in order to do that, I need to like just sit in a quiet spot. Like I can't, I can't have like horror. I can't be reading and watching TV or, you know, I can't be reading and listening to music. I really just need to like sit for an hour and read. Um, and the more I've done that, the, the richer that has been like, but because of that, because that silence has gotten better, my conversations have gotten better and the talking has gotten easier, I think. Well, it's so. almost like oh, this is going to sound cheesy now that I think about it, but like you're having a conversation with yourself in those moments. Yeah. And if, you, if you're if you stopping that up, you, you kind of stop the ability to filter out some of the the bad ideas before they they get to the, 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 the poor, hapless soul that you, you come upon and you just start throwing everything at them. Yeah. So I was going to ask this earlier, but you kind of already answered it, I guess. But I was going to ask if, has this challenge 
Do you have any desire to start your own third spaces? Do you feel the need to start any? Sounds like no. But. I've already I've already done so much of that to be honest. Um, I do think uh, if I needed any anything out of that, it's it's a I need to define some of them better. Yeah. What purpose are they bringing either to my life or to those around me? What is the goal? That's something I really appreciated about what Ross had to say when he was talking about forming these groups. Mm-hmm. I I have a tendency to. Um, for better or for worse, if if my group of guy friends gets interested in something, right, one or two of us get in- interested in something, then I want to invite everybody I know to, to get involved in that, right? Because yeah. I want to share this cool thing. You know, we got into disc golf several years back, so I was inviting everyone I knew to go disc golfing. Right. Right. And, you know, that that's that's a harmless thing to go disc golfing, but at a certain point, it kind of actually breaks down the group because it's like, well, you can't go with, you know, more than about four people to go disc golfing. Like, it's just not as yeah. enjoyable with a large group. Um, and the same thing goes, uh, Ross mentioned, he's got his little poker group. I have a little poker group. It's fun. But the same thing happened where we just started inviting a bunch of people that we knew when the group kind of broke down for a while because it was like, these aren't necessarily the right fit for our group. It's just not as fun with somebody that's taking this too seriously. Right. It, you know, we're here to have fun and, and have some community. We're not here to sit and, you know, be this these, is not the world masters. series of poker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we have that tendency as a group to do that. And I was thinking, you know, it would be good for me to kind of cool that down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's okay if one of my friends isn't as interested in something as I am. Yeah. They don't have to come along for the ride. And in fact, that can be a good thing because I can have a couple different separate groups where these people really start to thrive. Yeah. Uh, so so less starting my own new third space and more defining better what some of my current ones are. Uh, what about you, Pancho? Yeah, I, I really want to. So where I am geographically, I've used kind of as an excuse not to for a long time. I'm I'm far because away. Because there's from, nothing in Pennsylvania. Well, there's nothing in my part of Pennsylvania. No, nothing in Pennsylvania whatsoever. <laughs> Hey, we have the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's a that's a pretty good that's a pretty good ballpark. It's not a great ball club, but it's a good ballpark. Is, what what uh what league are they in? Are they National League? Okay, yeah, that's a yeah. good it's a good club. You should you should go check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, come good. up to Pittsburgh sometime. We'll go we'll go catch a game. Um, but anyway, I am like thirty to forty minutes away from everybody else that um, I'm close to, even my church and my work. Um, just have that kind of distance. And I've used, I've been like, well, I guess I can't do anything with these folks. I have a, you know, I have a men's Bible study that I go to on Wednesdays and that's been really great. I really appreciate that. And Sunday service is, you know, always good, but I don't really have that third spot. Like I don't have that third right. connection point. Um, and so I kind of was like, after the conversation with Ross and with Connor, it was like, oh, I can just start that. Like I can do that. There's, there's no reason not to. Um, it's as easy as just saying like, this is what, like you guys were talking about, like having a poker night. And I was like, Oh, it'd be fun to have a poker night. And I was like, Oh, I can just ask if people want to do a poker night. Like that's not, totally. I don't have to like wait for one to form. I can, I can do that. And so like, I'm working on getting the right group of guys together for a poker night, you know, that's fun. We got to see where it's going to happen. I also watched the movie Rounders, which helped. Uh, um, oh, Banjo. It's always it's, movies like Inspire. I <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. Don't don't take that for 100% inspiration, sir. No, no, of course not. Um, by the way, there's just like some movies that people should like never show me. Like, because it's just going to be like John Wick. Just don't show me John Wick because the, the next thing you know, I'll be in the Russian mafia and it's just going to be bad. Banjo um, just downloads whatever film he's just seen. It's his new personality <laughs> every time. <laughs> I, I'm a little ashamed at how true that is. Um, but yeah, so anyway, it, it's just, I think it's easier to start a group than I thought and and I should just do it. So that was kind of my takeaway from from that. And thinking about too, I don't know if you have thoughts on this. I'd love to hear them. Um, but just also like the community that comes out of suffering, like thinking about the endurance. That's, 100%. That has stuck with me yes. uh, since that conversation. Wait, you, you're excited about it. Tell, talk more. Uh, I can tell you, I really think um, when, you, when you suffer together, when you work hard together at a common goal, there's something that happens. Every cross-country team I've ever been on. Exactly. 
Yes. I, I, you know, I, one of the biggest things I miss from college, I don't miss the, the crazy late nights trying to get homework in. I don't miss all the exams. Like there's a lot I don't miss. I miss my team. Yes. Yes. And we suffered together in like, I don't in know. In a myriad it, of ways. In a myriad of ways. Oh my. Uh, more than even just the running. Anyway. <laughs> um, it was a great experience though. Like I love that. And I, it was. I, I, I think of that every time I'm, I'm going to go do a workout, you know, I try to get a workout in. It's the hardest thing for me to go do a workout without a team there. It's so difficult going. now. There's no, there's no community to suffer with. And I think exactly. that it, it makes it so much harder for there to be meaning in the suffering. You know, there's, it's like, I, I have my running shoes, but the part of me is like, what's the point? You know, it, I'm doing it alone. I'm doing it alone. And I, and I won't like, there's no, especially when I don't have a race that I'm signed up for, you know, when I have a race I'm signed up for, then there's the feeling of, well, I'm going to go to see a community. There's a, there's a group that I'm right, going to go right. do this with. Um, but I'm, but I, if I'm just running for fun now, it's really hard to get out the door because there's no, there's no one to suffer with. So suffer with your friends. Well, I, I think, I think there's, we naturally do that as guys sometimes mm -hmm. like in our, in our guy groups, we find an activity that we might all be mutually terrible at and yeah. we go do it. Like, so it's we not like we're, we're, we're horribly suffering, but, but we put ourselves in these situations sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a fine thing. That's a good thing to do. You know, when, like I mentioned disc golf, when we're all learning that we're all getting frustrated because it seems like we're hitting trees more than anything else. Like, and that's yeah. just, that's just how it goes. But we learn together and you grow together as a group. Uh, so I think guys naturally find that, that, that team in some ways. Do you, uh, do you think that's, thing. do you think that's, um, like, is, is that unique to male community? Like, do you, as we're starting these groups, is that something we should think about? Like this, this, uh, like, is there a degree of mutual suffering that we should incorporate into our third space building? Hmm. Interesting. I think yes and no. It's interesting you ask specifically about guys, the male, the male community, as you put it. Um, the, the male community, we get cards. <laughs> the male community, we've got. We're actually driving around in little postal service. <laughs> <laughs> all of our, all of our mail is just blue. It's specifically blue. Good Don't stuff. Do anything else? Um, but you know, I do think there is something to be said for the difference between guys and girls in this. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what it is because I will definitely say, I think most, most of the guys I know need their guy friends more than the girls I know need their, their girlfriends. Hmm. Interesting. Um, that's a massive overgeneralization though, based on my community and my, the, That's the funny because I was around. I was probably going to say the opposite because because I think of my guy well I mean it depends on what you mean by like I need my friends you know because like I have I have guy friends who I like deeply truly love but I also can like not talk to them for six months and we're like totally fine Do you know what I mean well, no absolutely I think I think it's less about that you know I've had some friends move away and I don't see them and that's fine, but we get together and we hang out. Like, you know, it's, yeah. it's, we pick on the same conversation somehow. That's just how it conversation, is. Conversation, by the yeah, way, there's, there's something to that. Um, I, I just think maybe it's also the fact that most of my friends at this point are, most of the women I know are married. Mm. The, the single guys in our group, they still need to get out and like they're, they're wanting to that get out and, and see people. That makes sense. So I know some single guys and the married guys I know, they still want to hang out because we've all known each other for a long time and we like to get together. And so we generally all get together at least once a week, um, at least within kind of my more immediate friend group. Mm -hmm. But our, our wives are, they're, they're more interested in taking care of the kids, um, making sure things happen. Now that's not to say that they, that's what they would necessarily choose to do if uh, if there were no kids around. Like, in some ways, there's there's that responsibility of uh, watching over the children. That's the motherly duty more so, uh, more so than the fatherly duty. And I want to be careful here. 
I don't want to say dads go out every night and hang out and party while your wife stays at home and watches the kids. Well, it should be, these are like both things that like parents, husbands and wives like need. You know, we both need community, whatever that looks like. Right. And we also both need to like be present with our children, you know? So <clears throat> there's like a, there's a degree to which I think, you know, I, I always think it's interesting in, in our podcast because I, I think there's a degree to which we really like, we chose our focus. We chose what we want to say to young men and, right. and, and like, that's who we are. And so it's what we want to talk about. But I, I really truly think that all of the things that we talk about really apply to both of the sexes almost Absolutely. equally. Like I, I, I don't think there's any episode we've talked about that is like, well, only like this is just men are, are better or should only do or like any of those right. things with this. Like I, I just I never think that's what our goal is. Our goal is always to say like, hey, we're trying to understand who we are as young men. And, and so we're going to like tailor our conversation we're to focus that. On that. Yep. We're going to focus on that. But everything that we say, we're, we're, we really put, I think, the Christian part of our living before like the manly part of our living, you know? Well, as we should. I, I Thinking again, just on kind of the, the differences between men and women that in, in needing community and conversation, I do think that... Um, no, actually, I know for a fact my wife has wanted to get out a little more with her friends. I think it is. Maybe it's just her friend group. It's harder for them to all to get together. But there's yeah. something about guys that are just like, yeah, come on over, whatever. You know, um, you might need to grab some food over here because I got nothing. Or I have a half a pizza sitting in a fridge. Like, like guys just don't care in, in the same way that I think women do sometimes. About I, I, yeah, like there's less of a, I think there's less of, and, and I would have to ask, my wife about this to see if this is true but I, my my suspicion is there's a little there's a little less like there's a little less comfort to male gathering than there is to female oh, gathering definitely you know we're we're very okay with like well you got a you know it, it's a really hard case pair of, yeah. but there's a beer in the fridge so we're good i don't guys know. will hang out in the garage and be totally it's like you know the middle right. of winter two beers and you know a, a pack great. of something and you're just like all right this works for me yeah, great hang. it's great. You know, I'm, I feel like, uh, although it, it was good, um, you know, my wife listens to our episodes to make sure I didn't say anything terrible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think she enjoys them. I hope she enjoys them. If you're listening to this right now, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, <laughs> but she was saying she really liked that conversation we had with Ross because I, I she said, you know, she's kind of put up some excuses for why she hasn't gotten together yeah. with yeah. some of her co old college roommates as much. Or some of the moms in town who she knows, but and and they have a fine relationship, but they've never gotten to know each other much deeper. Mm -hmm. um, and so she was saying she would like to start doing a regular, just go get together as as the as the single women and wives of this little community. Yeah, and you know it might be five to eight of them, and um, I think something that that stood out to me from what Ross said and that my wife pointed out as well is he was intent on setting those boundaries of like it's always yeah. this night you know if you can't make it sorry we don't reschedule things like that like here's yep. here's here's the patterns and i think that's something that we all fall into at one point or another because we are so intent on wanting everybody there which to connor's point you know we have to actually design something you know like right a, a, right i thought that, that was great the the designing conversation he said design um means to make a decision right Right. And, and to, to, yeah, to establish like a house has boundaries. Like you can't just like prop up four sticks and be like, behold the house, you know, you have to like actually have, have an enclosure. You have to have this space that's closed off, but then right. the, the home is always like you get sent out from there. You know, we talk about uh, like a church space, you know, the church is not a building, but the building is to draw you in so that you can be sent back out. You know, that's absolutely that's the function of a church. And I think that's the function of a community. And and um, I guess every community we're in should in some way be equipping us to go back out. And maybe that's our one of our cultural problems is we have communities that are so insular, you know, that we're not our, our communities are not designed to send us back out into the world. They're designed to protect us from the world. Interesting. You know, I. I I wonder if also we feel like we're going out because we come home and then we get on the internet. Yes. And 
I, I think that that can be a substitute. You know, my, my wife and I both got rid of all our social media at one point. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the best decisions we ever made because mm-hmm. it forced us. We're like, well, uh, instead of wasting an hour of my time, I'm going to either I'll read a book or maybe I'll go, I'll go out and see a buddy and I'll do something. Yeah. Um, and I'm back on social media now. Uh, my wife, though, she's, she stayed off of it. Um, so she needs to check something. She uses one of my accounts. Yeah. Um, which is great because, you know, it's, it, that provides some accountability for me as well, as far as, you know, I'm not always on it because I know my wife's not on it. I have no excuse. I can be like, right. well, she's on there. So I should, I should get my social media time, which yeah. is a terrible way to think, but I, I do that admittedly. Well, the other thing that I, like my wife and I both do is like, we, we have our, like our, our quote unquote friends that we listen to on our like YouTube channels or Spotify, right. you know, it's like, like when I'm going to, to work, there's like this, you know, there's the one podcast that I want to listen to. Right. And I don't think of them as my friends, but that's, a, that's what they essentially are. And they're my parasocial friends. Like I want to hear what they're thinking. I want to hear what their opinion is on this, on this event or whatever. Um, and my, you know, my wife will listen to these different things and she just calls them her friends. She's like, Oh, my friends are, you know, she's much more honest about it than I am. That's funny. Good for um, her. and, and it's like, but, but that's what we do is, is right, we right. trick ourselves into thinking that this, this person who does not know my name is my friend. Um, and, and, you know, I care about what they think, even if they, will never know that I exist. You know, it's, it's just one of those strange things. I don't know what to do with that, but it's just it's just something we do. I, I think people have been doing that for as, as long as we, we've been able to distribute communication. You know, people will read yeah. another, another person. Marcus Aurelius even does that. Like he references, or he, he talks about some people as if they, as if he knows them well, when he right. only read their works. Yeah. Yeah, that's right? true. So, you know, people have been doing that for a long time. And I don't think that's a a bad thing to do if they're a worthy input into your life. I do think it's a it's a poor substitute for real community. Sure. Um, yeah, if it's your if it's your only community, it's gonna be that's gonna be an anemic relationship. But if it's part partly because you don't get to have that back and forth that we were talking right. about earlier. You don't get to uh, one thing I liked what, what Ross said was uh, you when you're having a conversation and you have an idea, you know, you're sending out your idea to die. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and you throw something out and someone else says, no, that's not quite right, but here's a better idea. You know, and you kind of go back and forth on that. Uh, especially if you're having a, a deeper, more, maybe more philosophical conversation of some sort. Uh, and I, that, that image has stuck with me because you cannot do that in isolation. If you're just sitting and watching YouTube, someone else is, is sending you something you can't really swap that down except in the comments and nobody, I mean, nobody cares about the comments. And if, uh, if you have an idea and you, you send that back out at them, like chances are they're never going to, like it's never going to go anywhere. So people, yeah. people, what people do is they end up on forums or, or whatever. And that's fine. But I found those conversations to be thoroughly unproductive in, in general. So yeah. And the state of the, on, of the online world. Yeah. Cause you don't, you don't get to see the other person. You don't get to treat them like a human being and you don't, you know, you, you don't, there's no, there's no reason to have respect for that person if you never see them, you know? Exactly. But. Yeah. I, I have definitely had some good things to think about. I think, um, one of kind of the final things for me to talk about anyway is, uh, something I appreciated from Connor was his perspective as a, uh, as an architect, yeah. as a landscape architect and, thinking through how does our very environment affect us? Yeah. So I've thought about that even in terms of my own home. Like if I invite someone in, is it a place that encourages good community and good conversation? Are, are there comfortable chairs to sit down in? Is there, you know, is the couch clear and ready for them? Things like that. Like those, that's, that's the domain that I have, I have control over. Is is my yard an inviting place to go hang out outside? Like, right. what what are the what's the environment that I'm creating around myself and yeah. around my friends and family? I always think about like a living room. You know, where are the chairs pointed? Are the are the chairs pointed at a TV? Or are right. they in a circle? And you know, my my small apartment our our couch is just aimed directly at the TV. 
because you know that's what we do most nights you know so it's just kind of like the way things go but you know i i really appreciate you know in, in larger homes when people have like this is our tv room and this is our living room like and this that is, is a cool feature you know not everybody's that <laughs> not everybody's gonna yeah not everybody's gonna be able to afford that or you know not, not everybody can do that and you know i've heard you know some people um have like they'll put a painting over the tv you know or something like that but i just i appreciate yep. those areas those homes where people are intentional and they say you know we enjoy tv we enjoy having that but that that tv is going to have its own room it's going to be away and if we're going to go watch it we're going to go to that space but here this is our communal space this is this is the place where we do this together absolutely i think uh kind of one final question for both of us uh what did we think of this challenge as a whole is this something we want to continue to intentionally do or it, if so, would we change it in some way? Well, I guess I'll I guess I'll start. Um, the the I think I think this one's like key. Like I think this one is you know we were talking about how you know the, if the if the Bible reading is like our foundational habit, you know I I think in some ways this one's a close second um, because you know, what's the thing that we should be doing immediately after we're reading our Bible or before we're reading our Bible is prayer, which is conversation with God, you know, uh, interesting is, is talking there. Um, and I think if, you know, one of the, we're, we're designed for community. We've been saying that again and again, um, and we're designed for commute for communication, right. Both, you know, to, to take from, uh, take from Connor's bag a little bit here, you know, the the root of those words, the etymology of those words, both have that that c o m um, prefix, which means with. You know, it's that Latin with word. Um, right. And, and so, communication, community, those are both done with someone else, uh, with others. Um, and if if we're not engaging in um, in communicating, uh, if we're not engaging with the people that are around us, then then we're going to do a very poor job communicating, engaging with, listening to God. Like that's just it's going to be a fundamental um, trouble for us. I watched a movie this week. Sorry, third movie dropped this this pod. Um, but it's like a um, record for how few. <laughs> <laughs> what was this movie? Little Miss Sunshine. You ever seen this one? I don't think so. I think I've heard of it. You you might like it. Anyway, um, it's got uh, it's got Paul Dano in it. Young Paul Dano playing this uh, this young teenager. Um, he's he's eighteen or seventeen, uh, and he's decided to go into the Air Force Academy. And until he goes into the Air Force Academy, he's decided he's going to take a vow of silence uh, in order to demonstrate like how serious um, he is about this thing. Um, and so he's not talking with his family the whole, pretty that, much the whole movie. That sounds intense. Also, kind of um, funny. it's very funny. It's a very funny movie. Um, very dark movie, but very, very funny. Um, but anyway, his, his silence is, it's deeply tragic and comic at the same time, because, you know, he's got so much inside of him that he wants to express so much that he cares about, um, so much that he loves and hates. And yet he, he can't say it to anybody. Um, and, and his family is just kind of like around him, but not really can't engage with him because of his choices, you know? Um, and just seeing that made me think of how, how that misses the point. Like a vow of silence is, is, it seems to me extremely detrimental, um, to ourselves and to understanding who we are, but you know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. How about you? What, what are you taking away from, from all this? I, I definitely think you know, I, I, again, I'm blessed to be in, an, in a community where I'm regularly having good conversations. Uh, so it's not something I think I'm going to be sitting and ticking my box and making sure I did my, my fortune honor challenge for that day. But I do think that, uh, like you're saying, it is essential. Um, I think there are times, though, where intentional silence is good. You know, turn yeah. off the radio or yeah. the, the, the whatever music you have on or podcast. Um, those can be good times if they're preparing you to re-enter that community, have a good conversation and, and uh, learn more about the people around you. I, th I think those are all good takeaways. So yes, continue. I, I would, you know, if I was to redo this challenge, 
I might modify I might modify the the conversation piece in some way. I don't know you know hitting hitting like a 20 minute quality conversation. Like, I don't know how you how to measure that. I think, in, I think in hindsight it, it's a little arbitrary. You know, if some people hit 15 minutes, they, they still had a good conversation. I I don't really care. Um so that might be something I would just from a practical perspective kind of clarify like what what we're really trying to achieve here. And sometimes you don't know if you're having a good conversation until you're like an hour in, you know, like that's, that's fair. Yes. And and that can take a long time. So I, I do think um, go all the way back to when we first introduced this, uh, I guess, uh, at the end of our Bible reading uh, challenge. When when we introduced this, uh, it was stemming from the either have a meal with someone every day or the, you know, hour conversation once a week. Right. Which I think ultimately is probably a little more reasonable in terms of how you actually approach that. Um, so maybe maybe if I was completely reframe this, it might be, you know, share something with someone every day. Oh, that's good. Yeah, um, I like that. Which share. would be less about the conversation, but I think it would actually stab more at the community right. in some ways. There would be more of a build to it and in some ways more of a community aspect to it. Right. You, even then, w- what I like about that, which you frame in there, is you're not taking some something from someone, like have a conversation with someone. Right feels a little bit like okay i i I'm, i have to get something out of you for this. i need my conversation for the day so yeah talk to me but sharing right. with somebody that's that's a different there's a different impetus there so right i like that i like that adjustment yeah. share coffee or something uh that that's how i would probably readjust it personally but uh all in all i think this has been really good i've learned a lot uh it's been made me much more aware of my conversations likewise All right, on to the next challenge. As a reminder, challenges last for six weeks. They are simple daily tasks to grow us as men. This next challenge is uh, under the umbrella of exercise. I think we've done one very similar to it before. Um, Time but- outside. I think we did a 15-minute exercise. Maybe it was like our third episode. Yes, it was a while year. back. But we're, we're reviving the 15-minute one. So it's a 15-minute exercise every day. That's all it is. Uh, minimum. Although, should we do fifteen minutes? Now, now I'm discussing this. Should it be like ten? Is that more reasonable for people? Uh you know, here's the thing with our challenges. You know, there's no way for us to keep track. So, you know, that's it's, fair. It's more of a scout's honor kind of a thing. I, Absolutely. you know, I think fifteen minutes is uh, it's five more minutes. So, sure. for, for me, it's like, yeah, uh, fifteen minutes is. We're gonna have to talk about this in a minute, but. 15 minutes for me is like, how do, how do I get a full workout out of that? Because I'm used to like, I have to go for a run and that's like a two hour right, right. endeavor, you know? So how do I get an exercise in 15 minutes? That kind of thing. Anyway, sorry. Well, well, the, the challenge is, is less about, um, hit this exact benchmark every day, only right. 15 minutes, no more, no less. You know, if it's only 10 minutes one day, I don't, I mean, nobody cares. Um, if it's an hour or two hours one day, I, you know, you can argue about whether or not that's beneficial for your body. Uh, but again, I don't really care. Um, the point is do physical exercise every day. Engage um, in meaningful physical exercise. All right, daily. Banjo. Let's let's just be very specific about that. Trust me, I'm a teacher. You gotta be so clear with your uh with your expectations. All right. Well, um, I'm excited about this one because I have fallen off on my exercise ever since <laughs> having a baby and coming through the holidays. It's good. Uh, so I have some plans as far as how I'm going to approach this. Um, I've mentioned before, there's a, a men's workout group in the area goal of going to that, you know, once or twice a week. There's, I just, I got a gym membership cause I've been not, uh, maintaining my weight as well as I should in terms of, I lose weight too quickly. I need to gain weight. Mm. Um, same boat. But, yeah. So I need to gain some weight. And then, uh, Banjo, you were, you were talking before the, the show about, uh, I think it was an art of manliness thing that would be a good resource. Yeah, yeah. If there's one place that we crib pretty liberally from, it's it's the Art of Manliness podcast. So you know, always go check those folks out. But they had a uh, an article this week um, that was pretty interesting about a if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, um, it was a it was a program that the, I think the Canadian Air Force uh, established. I think that's right. Um, that was like an an 11 minute workout a day. 
uh, plan basically to get in shape. And it was just kind of like plyometric exercises, calisthenics, like, you know, you didn't need any, um, body, you didn't need any, um, any weights or anything like that. Um, and I was looking at, I was like, I think I can cram this into my schedule. You know, like I, I am looking more and more for ways that I can exercise in a short amount of time and, and have reasonable expectations as I'm getting, I'm not old. I'm not even really close to being old, but I'm getting older and I'm getting out of that stage where I can just be like, yeah, I'm going to crank out 10 pull-ups every 20 minutes. You know, it's like, that's getting harder, uh, to do. And I certainly don't have the time to do it. Um, so finding more and more exercises that are like, okay, this is a reasonable expectation for my body. Um, and, and this seems to be a good, a good way to do that. So I think it's called the, the five BX plan. Something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, look it up or we can put a link in the show notes. Uh, and if I recall reading that one, that one's actually only an 11 minute a day. Yeah. So, so I'll have to come up with an extra well, four. It does say it. I think it did say like you could add a run at the end or do whatever, like, but also if it's not exactly 15, nobody cares. So next challenge for the next six weeks, every day, do some form of meaningful exercise in the range of, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and yeah, it's, I think it's going to be good. I'm yeah. I'm excited. Time. I'm coming back in two weeks, fitter and fitter and fairer. I'm, I'm excited to see, um, how it goes over. I mean, six weeks is really not that long as far as, uh, exercise goes, you know, it can take a very long time to really show benefits, but that can be long it. enough to get in shape. I mean, it's like what, four weeks to get in shape, shape for a 5k. So, you know, maybe, yeah, this is going to be good. Be fun. Let's get some exercise in. I'm excited. We've got. Uh, I'm excited to have our guests on because we might get some really practical stuff out of this one. Oh and yeah. As everybody knows I like the practical. Like, give me, give me something to do. Yes. Yes. Down, down to the bare bones. This has been the Forging Honor Podcast. Music and production is by Elliot George. For more information about what we do or to learn how to get involved, visit our website at forginghonor.com. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to like, subscribe, and give us a rating to bring others into the Forging Honor journey. On our website, you'll find information on how to do the challenges alongside us, as well as links to the many resources we mentioned in the show. And we do make a small amount from any purchases you make through our website link, so thank you in advance. Thanks for taking the time with us today. We hope you'll take up the work alongside us and join us in the task of forging honor. We'll see you next time.